Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week we're going to be looking at allowing yourself to be seen. And in this world where we have so much social media and where presenting ourselves in a certain way is almost like an unwritten rule, allowing yourself to be truly seen seems to be completely counter to what everyone else is trying to do. Trying to portray this perfect life where everything is beautiful and you're having the most amazing experience and they're so unique and so much better than everybody else. But actually, allowing yourself to be seen is where true freedom lies. Because trying to maintain a perfect looking life to everybody else is incredibly exhausting. Not only is it exhausting, but it actually creates a lot of distance between you and other people. If you think about people, um, and the name Brene Brown comes to mind, who've shared really personal insights into their own lives, you feel a connection with people like that. It's almost like you get them and you understand them on a much, much deeper level than you would somebody who portrayed this perfect lifestyle. And when somebody is that natural and that human, there's such authenticity within them. So the upsides of allowing yourself to be truly seen are deep connections with other people, a freedom to really be who you are and to own every aspect of who you are. And when you own everything and you learn to let go of the shame of some things that you think are unacceptable, you can see the same in everyone else. You're able to see that all humans are just human. We're all flawed. We all have things we like and dislike about ourselves. But that, that does not make you a good or a bad person. It just makes you human. Allowing yourself to be truly seen also creates confidence, like deep, deep confidence. Because when you have accepted every part of yourself, whether somebody else accepts it or not, it's completely irrelevant. When you're trying to hide parts of yourself, there's a fear inside of you that you think somebody might see something that you don't want them to see. And with that comes almost like a hiding a part of yourself away. And that takes a lot of effort and thought and manipulation and all of these things. And whilst we don't think that other people pick up on that, they do. We all pick up on everything that everyone is being on some level, whether we're aware of it or we're not. So I feel that there's a massive reason why learning to allow yourself to be seen is so incredibly important because it helps you to live a much more full and happy and confident life. So how do you go about it? That's the next question. And how do you overcome the fear of it all? Well, for me, <laughs> my foray into it was bizarrely enough sitting here in front of a camera and a microphone, was when I did my training, we had to do these little videos. And on one of the, well, I realized that I could get up and stand in front of people and talk and feel quite comfortable. But as soon as I got up in front of a video, I became really self-conscious and self-aware and not in a good way, in a really awkward, and I, I didn't feel like I was being me and it bugged me. So what I did was I got a piece of paper and I sat down and very innocently, I started bullet pointing all the things that came up for me when I imagined myself sitting in front of a camera. And I started and I put them all down and the very last thing that I put down was alone. And I think the fear around that was that people wouldn't accept me, that I'd be rejected if people saw every part of me. And the fear then would be that I would be alone if I was rejected. And I can't say that it was pretty because when I realized this, one solitary tear crossed down the side of my face and then, and then the floodgates opened. But allowing myself to fully feel that and asking myself the truth, is it really true that I would be rejected by every single person I knew if they knew who I was, was realizing that that was so untrue. And also realizing that the truth is that the more people know you, the more they're able to love you because they're allowed to see all of you and the more accepting they are of all of you. And would you really want to be accepted by people who didn't want to see all of who you are? 
So the first step is to realise what it is that you're afraid of, what you're afraid people will see if they were able to see all of you. And the next step is to be comfortable with all of you. And there's a lovely lady who unfortunately has now passed called Debbie Ford, who's done a lot of work on shadow self. Um, and this is about looking at the aspects of yourself and finding out how they serve you. So it's about being very introspective and seeing, and, and actually you don't have to be that introspective because what you need to do is to notice when somebody says something about your character that really triggers you. So for me, in the years gone past, one of the things was pathetic, bossy, um, too sensitive. So just those are just to name a few things that I used to get triggered by if people said that that's what I was. And it's to look at those aspects of who you are and to find out how they serve you. It's to own them. So instead of making them wrong and trying to push them away and hide them from everybody else, it's to bring them into the light and looking at them and say to yourself, okay, so this is who I am. This is a part of who I am. It's not all of who I am. And how does that serve me in this life? So me being bossy, <laughs> It meant that I was able to move forward and do things and be heard. Um, being oversensitive, funnily enough, is one of my greatest assets in my life because it's how I empathetically connect with people. I can feel what people are going through without having to necessarily have a massive discussion with them. I can just feel it in my body. So I love that part of me now. And pathetic was, I suppose, was feeling weak and feeling helpless. And there have been times when I have felt like that. But on the opposite side of that, I was brought up to feel that I had to be strong. And being strong is exhausting. So I've realised that there's a balance. There's a time when being weak or not being strong and asking for help is incredibly important. And I no longer see it as pathetic but I've owned it and I now integrate it into being a healthy human being. And I want to say that laughing at yourself and learning humility about who you are is one of the most wonderful things that you can do. Because if we're thinking about the ego state, and for me the ego state is anything to do with your identity, the persona that you've created in this lifetime, the more we're able to laugh at who we are, the less hold the ego has over us and the less seriously we take ourselves. And all of that creates a lightness, an effervescent part to your personality because the ego is constantly trying to protect itself and make itself real. But who you are is so much more than your ego that if you're able to laugh at yourself and to see the funny side in your personality, you will stay much more centred much more true to yourself and much more real. Now, I know I've only just scraped the surface on allowing yourself to be seen, but I hope there's something in this video that you found that will help you to sort of break open a little bit more and step forward a little bit more into being who you truly are. There is, it's not by coincidence that authenticity is valued so highly in society, and yet it is such a rare commodity. And this being truly seen is about being authentic. And I might speak about authenticity in a bit more detail in a later video. I've really loved being with you here today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I would really appreciate it if you liked it or subscribed or even shared it with people. That would mean a lot to me. If you want to access any more resources that I have, you're welcome to do so on my website, which is www.britannia.com. B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-A dot com. And I have a free course that I'm giving to people, which is Five Steps Towards Self-Awareness. And in that, I give you five days, five tools each day of those five days. Um, they're just something fun, but something that I really help, hope will help you on your personal growth journey. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.